Hey, Aaron here with Automated All Things. I know it's been a little while since my last video, so I hope you'll pardon my silence. It's been quite the year with the new job and the pandemic and having to move here and there, but I'm back and I hope you'll enjoy this new automation that I'm showing you, which is a problem I've been trying to solve myself for quite a while. So uh, I really like to keep track of my finances, try to do itemized uh, receipts and try to you know get a sense of where all of my money is going or categorizing all of my different transactions. The biggest hurdle I've had for doing that is you know importing all of my transactions from different accounts, whether that's different credit cards, different debit accounts, or different investment accounts. And so um, you know I strive recently or kind of crack the nut on that by using a few tools. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to bring in all of your transactions from different accounts into Airtable using Tiller Money and Parabola. And then from there, being able to kind of track your finance and get a sense of where your money is going. Now, just out of the outset, this isn't necessarily the, the best solve, right? It's really expensive from if you are kind of paying for Airtable, uh, Parabola and Tiller Money uh, it, it, it might feel a little expensive. I already pay for all of these tools myself. So this, you know, makes that worthwhile. But that being said, let me show you the automation and you can decide for yourself whether this makes sense to you. So first, just a quick introduction into Tiller Money. Tiller Money actually just brings in all of your transactions from different accounts into a Google Sheet. And so they actually integrate with something called Yodly Interactive. It sounds like a played uh, competitor and you know on a recurring basis probably daily goes into all of your accounts pulls in all of your transaction into a sheet that looks a lot like this so really our goal is going to be to bring this sheet this Google sheet all of these transactions into Airtable so you know here is what you know my base looks like and I'll go into a base overview in a second so essentially, we just want to get things from here into here. Um, and to do that, we are going to use Parabola. So Parabola is a tool that lets you import information, mainly from Spreadsheet, and lets you export that information to Airtable. So we're actually going to be syncing on a daily basis everything that happens or everything that's updated in this sheet to our Airtable base. So let's go ahead and start kind of talking about how I've structured this base. And really important to note that, you know, you may want to structure this differently. So my main goal for this base is that every single transaction that comes in through here, so you have to imagine, you know, on a daily basis, transactions are going to come in through here. And don't worry, this these aren't my actual transactions. Um, and they're going to kind of add to this sheet. And what I want is these new transactions to come in here. So my goal is really to be able to categorize, you know, I have these type right here, type, um, according to a wide variety of transactions, whether that's bills, rent, entertainment, fun, I wanna get a granular sense of where my money is going. And to do that, I bring in all these transactions and then in the description, that's what kind of it's called on this sheet, uh, there's the vendor. So I have this little vendor tab where we create a linked record to the vendor and then I can categorize each different vendor. And I'll give you a sense of what that feels like when I do a larger import here in a moment. So once I've assigned a vendor to a category, I can look up that category right here in my type. And then from there, I can kind of create graphs that look at my distribution of spend over a particular month, the look at income versus, or inflows versus outflows for that specific month, um, and just really a simple base from which I can manage all of my finance. So we have this, we have this, and now let's actually work in Parabola to sync those two uh, tables, right? So our air table table or table in this base uh, in this sheet right here. So to do that, we need something that connects those two, um, those two sheets together. So I need a way of knowing 
you know, uh, uh, was this transaction, is this a new transaction or is this an existing transaction? So luckily, um, Tiller gives you a transaction ID. So yours is actually going to look a little different than this. This is actually transaction IDs that I added in because in their kind of sample data they sent over, there was no transaction ID. But the most important part is that that transaction ID will be unique. And what we want is to, you know, add in that transaction ID. So let me just go ahead and paste. Let me find these transactions just by the amount like that. Oh, those are actually not even transactions. So that, don't worry about it. So we're going to add all of these um, in our first run, and then we'll show you how we sync. So essentially we're going to go into uh, Parabola where we first import a Google sheet. So this imports that sheet that I just showed you. It's very simple. You just go to the file, select the sheet, and it'll import all the information. And then we do the same from Airtable. And this imports existing transactions. And then we want to match um, all Google Sheet. We actually, Essentially, we want to find all transactions that are not already in our table. So we're going to go ahead and add a join like that. Let's join these two suckers together. And our primary table is going to be the Google Sheet import. That's the previous step. And we want to keep all rows in the primary tables and only matches from all other tables. So we, we do want to do a, what we call a left join. And we want to join on transaction ID. So what this will do is that it'll put a match if transaction ID Am I calling this transaction key? Hmm. Oh, I know what's going on here. It's because I don't have a value in any of these right here. So let's just, you know, go one, two, three. It doesn't matter. Essentially, if you import in Airtable and none of your field has no values, it won't import it. So you notice that now I have a transaction ID. I'm going to leave that error in there. Always good to leave a few errors into your recording, just so people know that it's real. Um, so now we are essentially going to have our Google Sheet, you know, on the left as a primary, we're going to merge on our uh, existing transaction air table like that. And essentially, we should just have all of our existing transactions. There should be no merge because we haven't actually, you know, moved our transactions in there. And then we want to filter. So essentially, for everything, every transaction that is found, we want to remove it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is um, take any of these fields, and we know that. Uh, when any of these fields is uh, has a value that it's merged properly. So we are going to include where, so like the column, we're going to just add record ID. Record ID is just this column right here. If they are blank, uh, not, uh, we only want to keep those that are blank. Yes. So this shouldn't actually filter anything. There we go. And then we're going to do an API export, which is essentially just writing this table, the kept transactions into Airtable, right? Um, so I already have the kind of uh, the call here. So it's a post. That means we're writing to our table. And then we're just mapping fields one to another. So we're mapping date from the table that's cached in Parabola to date so on and so forth. Uh, I'll try to get the Parabola team to add this as a template that you can start from. But essentially, we're just mapping description to description, amount to amount, so on and so forth. Do you want to bring your attention to this little typecast true? That's important uh, since we are mapping some linked records. And essentially, typecast says, well, if I give you a string, in the linked record like this, 
uh, you need to infer whether it's a record ID or a string. And if it's a string, I want you to go ahead and kind of find that linked record or uh, create a new one. So if you didn't have typecast equal true, it would expect a record ID here. You're passing a string, it would error. Um, so I, I spent a little bit of time figuring this out. So, you know, quick tip there. Okay, so with that, let's actually go ahead and run this. And, and our expected outcome is that uh, we get all transactions inputted into here. Let's go ahead and do that. Publish, let's run it. And it's always, it's always fun if you're pretty confident. So now we have all of our transactions in, let me close this out, maybe zoom out a little bit. We have all of our transactions in our table. And so what it creates, it creates a linked record for all of these descriptions. And so you can go into vendors, then you just have to kind of map uh, what this transaction to what category it is. And what's great about it is that if you, and this was, was a huge truck, challenge for me is that if you buy something else from, you know, Audible, well, Audible should always have the kind of same grouping. Let's call it, put it under entertainment. Well, what's great about this, the way it's structured is that every new transaction from Audible will be auto categorized as entertainment. And you can even roll up uh, your total amount monthly, or you can look at it, uh, let's say grid by month like that. Let's group, oops, let's group it by month, there you go. And you can see these little sums. Um, I also like to create this kind of income versus expense. It looks all of all transactions, sums them up on a monthly basis. Uh, and then you could look at groupings by, uh, you know, expenses. Right now it's, it's not configured correctly because these aren't my transactions, um, but it'll give you a good sense. Now, I just wanna, before I let you go, before I sign off, if you will, I want a, an example of what net new transactions feel like. So let's go ahead and do that one more time, just you know, for clarity. Let me find this transaction right here in my table. I can see it right here. Let's go ahead and delete it. And so now what we expect is that this transaction, imagine it's a new transaction, is the only one that should kind of get to the end of our parabola flow. I won't go through running it, but I will give you a sense of what it is. So let's open up the editor. Let's go through this again with the new data. So we import all transaction as usual from Google. We import all our transactions. This one is gonna grow substantially. We join the two and now you'll notice that the join works very often. That unique key is found on both sides, this transaction ID, but it's not found for this trans first transaction. That's what we want. So let's go ahead and filter. Now you notice that we only have that one transaction and we would go ahead and write this one transaction to this air table, to this table. So uh, every day you can put this on a schedule uh, and you know Tiller will bring all your transactions into Google Sheets and then using Parabola on another schedule uh, will bring them into your table. Uh, I've been using this with a lot of fun for uh, maybe three, four weeks. Uh, definitely a lot of improvements. Uh, quick notes here, you can also add balance history um, and you, I have a little balances table as well if you wanna play around with that. Um, so you can also add your, your, your daily balances, get a sense of net worth. So uh, hopefully you're as excited about being able to uh, track all of your finances. For me, the part that's most important is actually just you know not having to do CSV imports on the first of the month because I would actually never do it. Uh, so let me know if this is useful to you. Uh, and with that, you know, have a great day and hope to, you know, be here more often. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Bye.